Welcome to tonight's presentation of the Pro Basketball Association. If you want pro, you want the PBA. It's an Eastern Conference showdown here in the PBA between the Dothan Snipers and the Montgomery Knights here on Triangle Sports as Dothan will pull down the opening tip and immediately put two on the home side of the scoreboard. I'm Caleb Peak along for the ride with you for the duration of this one. One of four meetings on the season between these two in-state rivals as driving hard left side of the lane and chipping it in as Marquez Brooks for his first points of the night for Montgomery in the visiting reds with the white trim and Dothan in the bumblebee yellow and black with the white lettering numbering and identifying markers as Dothan will go back up on top. Easy wrap around lay in is good for two. As we take a moment to look at the starting lineups for these two squads for Montgomery holding the ball right now. Number one, Deontay Brown as the shot will move out of frame and evidently was able to find the nylon. Again, number one, Deontay Brown in the starting lineup for Montgomery. And he's joined by number two, Jaron Washington Thomas. Number three, Marquez Brooks gets the starting nod as well as it's number four, Trey Jackson dribbling inside for Dothan. The stick back will go and it's a four point advantage for the nine and three Dothan Snipers who are in second place in the Eastern Conference. We'll get back to that in just a moment and rounding out the starting lineup for Montgomery, number 15, Adrian Williams. Has the shot up and good by the Knights down on the other end. Starting lineup for Dothan tonight is going to be number two, Jordan Neal, who is fourth in field goal percentage in the PBA. Shoots 54.3% from the floor. As off of the miss, here comes Montgomery. They had numbers for just a moment, but the defense gets back in time. No matter, though, as the size prevails, that tread down. Montgomery wins the battle of length, and they tie it up six apiece. Jordan Neal, of course, in the starting lineup for Dothan. He's joined by Trey Jackson, who is eighth in three-pointers made. He's got 25 of them here in 2022. Shoots 35% from beyond the arc. And he, by the way, wears the number four jersey. Number 11, Jeremy Shannon in the starting lineup as well for the Snipers. Number 21, Adrian Fulmar will be his flanking support and an unnamed player wearing number three. We do not have number three on the roster for the Dothan Sniper, so he will be the unnamed player tonight. As the score is all knotted up, just about two and a half minutes have ticked off of the clock as Dothan will get back to work. Dribbling inside with a high arcing flip, it's Jeremy Shannon almost able to get the circus shot to fall, but not this time. Three-pointer from the right corner, too strong, too much mustard on the attempt, and the defensive reboard, rebound rather is cleared away. Again, no, Dothan coming in at 9-3 and three on the season. Good enough for second place in the Eastern Conference. As there's a deep three from the right corner with a flick of the wrist. Makes it 11-6. Dothan up big early. And looking to pour it on. As the ball knocked out of play and will get a stoppage. Montgomery coming in on the other side of the coin at 2-8 here in 2022 in the cellar in the Eastern Conference. That is good enough for last place as almost losing it inside was Jaron Washington Thomas. He was able to get it down to Williams and Williams makes it count. So that'll close the gap just a bit, down to three now, 11 to eight. Dothan still controlling here as it's the unnamed player number three. Moving it inside. High arcing teardrop of a shot off the back of the iron and out of bounds. So the officials will keep the ball with the snipers here as this game in Dothan, this is a home game for the snipers in this in-state battle from north to south as McGovery will travel, uh, will travel down to just outside of the beautiful white sand beaches along the Gulf of Mexico. 
Dribbling with Shannon, he kicked it leftward. Shot too strong, and the defensive rebound knocked away. Here's Dothan with an opportunity. Count the bucket through the contact. Count the bucket and one. It's Jeremy Shannon doing the heavy lifting down low. He got it all started there, and it was Jordan Neal who eventually finished it up. Battled through the heavy contact in the paint. He's not able to convert the and one attempt, so only two points out of that play. Here comes Deontay Brown back down. He'll kick it leftward to Haynes. Isaiah Haynes had a wide open look, and he missed everything. Karam off the glass, goes back to Montgomery, and they'll make something happen with it. Kicks it inside to Adrian Williams, and Williams won't be denied. He's got the most size out of anyone in the Montgomery lineup, and he'll have to use it today. The brute strength could be the difference as, oh, look at that shot falling back down to earth. It was Shannon defying gravity, flips it high off the window, and it falls through. 15 to 10 is Montgomery, Montgomery rather keeping pace, bodies on the floor. It was Williams who hit the hardwood. And the men in stripes will give the ball to Dothan. As a number of players on this sniper squad have got all PBA accolades brewing. We haven't mentioned Jalen Robinson normally wears the number one jersey. He's 10th in the league in points per game. Coming into tonight with 24.2 points per outing. It's unclear whether or not we will see him as that shot was erased, blocked off of the, blocked off of the glass. Here comes Montgomery. They had numbers momentarily, and now they'll pull it back down. Here's the long three by Thomas. Jaron Washington Thomas can't get that one to go. Outlet pass up the length of the floor and out of frame. Yes, we'll have to use context clues to try to, uh, to try to piece this one together. Looks like it was an inside bucket good for two. So tack two more on the board for Dothan. Ball thrown away, and it goes right back to Montgomery. Lucky break for the Knights on that one. Over into the right corner, almost taken away, back up top. Man-to-man -man defense here. And Montgomery's able to penetrate. Crashing hard down the right side of the painted area. 17-12, Dothan setting the pace here. Last time these two teams met, 89-81 was the score and a win for Dothan. As the ball lost out of bounds with 439 left on the game clock here in the first quarter. Deep three coming, oh, count it. De Deontay Brown with a hand in the face. Flashing the concentration and the ball control. Flick of the right wrist makes it a two-point game. 17-15 and Dothan filling the heat. Dribbling inside. One pass over to Shannon. He'll float it with the left hand and off the left side of the rim. Here comes Montgomery looking for something out of nothing here as the ball is lost out of bounds down the left sideline and out of play. So the Snipers will bring it back down the other way. Off of the turnover by Montgomery. The last loss for Dothan. Coming back on August 21st. It was a 124 to 104 defeat at the hands of the Georgia Vipers. And we've got a timeout on the floor. It's the under five media timeout. Back right after a word from our sponsors. What happens when everything we know about something changes? I tell people all the time, this is the best American story you never heard. We're out hitting the pavement, talking to restaurants, talking to bars. I don't think of myself as a whiskey salesperson. I want you to know his name. Drink by drink, we're bringing this story to light. When we have to step back through the pages of history. It's so much more than whiskey. It's so much more than a brand. It's a movement. When we have to make amends and pay respect. We're honoring the greatest whiskey maker the world never knew. And it's beautiful and give credit where credit is due. Uncle Nearest is the godfather of Tennessee whiskey, and the world needs to know it. What happens? We do it. Uncle Nearest, it's more than whiskey.
Welcome back to Dothan, Alabama. This PBA Eastern Conference battle between the Snipers and the Montgomery Knights. As you've got to go back significantly to find the last time Montgomery was able to secure the W. It was a 110 to 101 victory against the Mississippi Hawks all the way back on July 9th. It's been a little while since these guys have been able to crack into the win column. So Montgomery off to a hot start tonight. Only a two point deficit here in the first period. 17 to 15 as Dothan has controlled since the opening tip. Moving the ball around the horn. Three ball on the way too strong. Offensive rebound is there. Battled hard underneath. May have been partially blocked as that shot got nothing. Here comes Montgomery off of the rebound under the basket. They'll kick it right back out up top. There was a semi-open three. And yes, there was enough contact to warrant the foul call. So that should send Montgomery to the line for a triple. Isaiah Haynes will shoot three from the charity stripe. As Dothan defended well that trip down, able to force a nice penetration play by Montgomery to come right back out to the top of the horn. It was Haynes who pulled up for the shot. He'll knock down the first free throw. And the closeout defender for Dothan knocked him to the hardwood. Second free throw good as well. Haynes with that diminished motion. Not much of a routine on the free throws. Spins the ball and puts it right up. Tie game for the first time today with 3.33 left to go here in the opening period. And Montgomery with a chance to take the lead for the first time on the evening. Isaiah Haynes spins it up and lets it fly. He's good on all three. 18-17, Montgomery on top. As we'll get another stoppage here off of the inbounds, and it's a timeout taken by Dothan. They're looking to cauterize the wound and stop the bleeding. We talked about this is the first, or excuse me, this is the fourth of four uh, scheduled meetings between these teams on the year. Already discussed how Dothan got the victory last time out, 89 to 81. The last win before that, coming back in the previous game on September 4th, it was a 114 to 106 affair in the victory over the Mississippi Hawks, who both of these teams have the common denominator of beating Mississippi this year. As we're just about ready to get back to live action here, your second place Dothan Snipers in the Eastern Conference, very much in the thick of the race, or the, very much in the thick of the playoff race, you should say. As we are headed down the home stretch here in the regular season. Hard to believe it's gone by so quickly. These teams have been playing since March. Some of them have anyway. 18-17, Montgomery holding their first lead of the day. We've got a foul called underneath so that'll stop the clock at 328 and that will send Dothan to the line to shoot a couple it's Trey Jackson stepping up to the line to shoot his first two free throws of the day first one rattles around and won't fall we've already mentioned his three-point shooting acumen eighth in the PBA and made three-pointers I've already told you he's got 25 made trays on the season. Good enough for 35% from beyond the line, but he's 0% from the charity stripe until just then. Make it 50% now. He's one of two that trip down, and we are tied yet again. Second tie of the ball game, 18 apiece, as Montgomery facing heavy backcourt pressure, and we'll get a stoppage in play. Did Montgomery call for a timeout there as we try to sort this out? That'll give everyone a chance to catch their breath. As we look at those highly contested Eastern, Eastern Conference schedule, everybody chasing Georgia right now. The Vipers easily in first place at 11-1 here in 2022. Followed up by Dothan in second. And the Music City Kings and Train to Eat in a dead heat for third place right now. Six wins apiece. 
so it will be... Well, it looked like it would be Dothan basketball momentarily, and it will be, as everyone is in place, and we're ready to inbound. Snipers will get it in. It goes to Neal. Working hard against the man-to-man -man D. Dribbles it back up top. He'll take his time. Dribbles right into the heart of the defense. Challenges his man one-on-one. -on -one, and with the right wrist, he'll flick it off the window for two. 20 to 18. Here's a tray on the other end. It would have given Montgomery the lead. It's no good. Offensive rebound is pulled down, though. Here come the Knights. Fall away jumper by the big man. That was Orlando Ties getting into the game for the first time tonight. His shot too strong, and it's lost out of bounds. Last touched by a Knight. So Dotham will hang on to the rock here. As you see the athleticism by the big man for Montgomery and Orlando Ties, we're also seeing Philip, Gl Philip Glover wearing number 22 for the first time as the deep three rattles around and won't fall. That was awfully close. But no good that time as Montgomery running into the half-court trap over on the far side. They'll break it this time, working hard as this three-pointer, you would assume, from the left corner almost falls, rattles around and comes right back out. Second chance attempt, no good either. So Dothan, with just over two minutes left to go in the opening frame, moves it across the timeline. It's Jamarcus Nuttley holding here. Moves it over to the unnamed player, number three, contested on the shot. He misses, gets his own rebound, puts the second chance effort up. That one's no good either, but it looks like he was fouled in the process. Forcing the issue is Dothan, and they're rewarded for it this time. It's Adrian Fulmar. Stepping up to the line for his first free throws of the evening, and he'll cash in the first one. Calls for the change. He's got another one coming. Still a single point, or excuse me, a single possession advantage here for Dothan. Exploded off, to the, off of the start. Jumped out to a five-point advantage early in the first period. Montgomery reeled Dothan right back in. And we've gone back and forth ever since as Fulmar is good on both free throw attempts. And we'll get a stoppage in play as Montgomery moves across the timeline, working right to left. As the head official will check in with the scorer's table. Hope you took your Dramamine today. for a moment there. Almost looked like the the gymnasium here in Dothan, Alabama on a trade ship. Off the inbounds pass, it's stolen away. Montgomery with numbers, the stop and pop on the other end. You can count that one. Quick hands on the takeaway. And it's a two-point ball game, 22-20. Dothan still leading and holding onto the ball here was Nunnally. Putting up the contested three. My goodness, the concentration to battle through the intense defense, hand right in the face, and it was nothing for Nunnally. Montgomery on the other side, though, will reduce the deficit back to three, forcing, forcing it quickly up the floor and outrunning the Dothan defense all the way to the nylon. 25-22 snipers still with a one possession advantage. It's Nunnally, three-point specialist for the snipers, one of them anyway. From the left side, he'll give it up instead. Heavily contested shot falling away from the bucket. That one's no good. Montgomery, it's Hill, moves it into the left corner. Can't see the shot. It looks like it was missed. As the rebound is contested, it'll fall into the hands of a Dothan sniper. Length of the floor pass, and Dothan was in the right place at the right time. It was Nuttley positioning himself on the other side, and he gets credit for the placement bucket. On the other side, it's Jaron Washington Thomas. That one looked to be good from two. It looked like his toes may have been on the line, and yes, they were. 27-24, though, on the deep two by Thomas. He's got a handful here in the first period. There's Nunnally with a uh, semi-open three. Defense was closing hard, and they forced the miss. On the other side, it's Orlando Ties working hard. Thought we might have a foul call coming, but not this time off of the miss. 
27, or actually it's a made bucket, 27, 26. Three seconds left, catch and release by Neal. No good on that shot, and that is how the first period will come to an end. Couple of high power, high octane offenses going at it, 27, 24. End of one from Dothan. You see, black people have always needed a place to gather since the beginning of time. To build, to reflect, to inspire, to connect. They say if you want to go fast, then go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. See, in continuing to fight for our lives to matter, we must have a place to gather. To write a chapter, enjoy the laughter, think and capture, sharpen our skills until they master. Not only a place to fraternize, but to strategize and analyze and advertise and sometimes just fantasize. See, 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 there's a certain brilliance that only comes from the collective. One for all and all for one is the objective. You get the message. See, we've always needed a place for like minds to collide and unlike minds to gain a better understanding of the other side. You know the vibe. You may want to switch lanes and you need a place to pick brains and network with big names. The level up is insane. The true meaning of for us, by us, with us, grown by us, stories told by us, shown by us, loaned by us, so it's always owned by us. Somebody better write a song about us. We all we got. We all we got. So meet me down at the gathering spot. You can feel the makings of a good one beginning to brew here from Dothan, Alabama, as the snipers hanging on to a slim one-point advantage. With 10 minutes on the game clock, just about set to go here in quarter number two, as you are watching the PBA on Triangle Sports, presented by 1891. I'm Caleb Peak, along for the ride with you. As Dothan had the advantage in energy and intensity off of the opening jump, but Montgomery hasn't let them get too far away. The lead hasn't been any larger than five over the course of the day. And Montgomery has led this thing themselves twice. Seems like Dothan has the advantage on speed up and down the floor. They're pushing the ball well, but Montgomery has come up with a handful of key stops. As you see right there, the takeaway. Can Montgomery turn it into two on the other end? It was Glover driving in, met in the air, and the shot adjustment isn't enough. Defensive rebound pulled down by Dothan, driving hard right side with the, with the floater. Too much on the shot, and it's off the back of the rim. Here comes Montgomery pushing the tempo. Back down the floor. No look. Layup attempt. That one's no good. Out of bounds as it was Jalen Smith flying down the right side of the paint. Had his head turned away from the bucket when he flipped the ball back over his head. Wasn't able to find pay dirt on that one, but Montgomery will hang on to the ball. And there's Hill wrapping around, excuse me, Jalen Smith putting himself at the top of the key wide open. And he reigns the three-pointer down. 29-27 as Montgomery back up by two. Working inside is Dothan. That was Fulmar. Drew the double team. Got the shot away the first time. The second one had it altered. And it flew all the way over the bench and out of bounds. But a foul was called in the process, so Adrian Fulmer rewarded for his dogged play style there. Was fouled down low before the ball was knocked out of bounds, obviously. First free throw up and good. We'll see if Fulmer can tie this one up here. Second trip to the line for Adrian. Second one, no good. It's off the back of the iron. And Montgomery will come away with it. Glover, who starts the second period after coming in off the bench in the first. Almost taken away. Dothan was headed back down the floor. And Montgomery able to get a hand in and stop the flow. It was Adrian Williams stopping what would have been a three-on-one. Coming back down the other way. So a blocking foul called against Dothan, and it's Montgomery basketball. 
Williams with a, an astute heads-up play as the three from way downtown misses everything. Air ball on the three-ball attempt, and it's Dotham basketball. Heavy backcourt presence. Montgomery electing to press here in the first half as Des Cole lets the three go. Wanted the foul call. He hit the deck and didn't get it. And the inside look is rejected. Oh, Montgomery. Imposing their will defensively. Glover gets the pass from the left elbow. Shot no good. The offensive rebound will go right back to the Knights, and they'll slow things down. Holding up top, it's Terrell, or Terrell Hill, rather. And count that three as Hill got it top of the key. Moved to the right with just enough space to let it fly. He does just that. And Montgomery building on the lead. It's up to four now. Two minutes expired here in the second period. And Montgomery looking for something to rally the troops headed into halftime. Oh, there's Des Cole. You can't leave him open. Right corner. He's more of a left-handed shooter, that unorthodox style. Count that one for three, and a timeout is called as Glover is going to run into trouble. The trap comes over for Dothan. Glover's got to pick it up and use a timeout. One-point advantage, 32-31, to 31. and Montgomery working hard here. 7.55 left to go until the half. One thing you can say about these Knights, Heady plays so far. High basketball IQ from a number of different players. That was, a, that was a nice decision by Philip Glover to call that timeout because he had run into no man's land. Found himself double teamed up against the sideline with his back pinned to the timeline. That's a quintessential half-court trap. And Glover had nowhere to go with it. You can say the same thing for Adrian Williams. It looked like it was going to be an easy three-on-one rush coming back down from Dothan. Williams threw himself in front of the play, got body on the ball, and forced everything to come to a stop. It'll be Jalen Smith inbounding off of the give and go, and he lost it on the way up. They caught Dothan sleeping, and they couldn't finish. On the other side, it was Des Cole. Another three-pointer from that same spot that he missed from earlier, and the same result this time. Defensive board goes to Montgomery. Left-handed pass inside, trying to find a streaking Gary Hollingsworth was Terrell Hill. And lost out of bounds. So the ball will go back to Dothan, looking to right the ship here, get their legs back underneath them. It's Jamarcus Nunnally running the point. Marched, uh, marked up by Glover. Driving inside, he dares the defense to get in front of him, and nobody will. Nunnally elevates with the left hand. He'll lay it in easily. 33-32, snipers back up. Circus shot on the other side. Montgomery not able to come away with points that trip down. Nunnally gives it up. One pass over to Fulmar. And the selflessness on the pass turns into points. Can't see what happened on that one. Missed three. Dothan comes back down with a three-point advantage. And this is the run that the snipers were looking for. One pass, make it two passes over into the left corner, and it's almost too easy. That's Jordan Allen. Finds himself all alone, and Montgomery's going to use a timeout to stop the bleeding here. Dothan on a run, 38-32. It's raining threes in Dothan, Alabama. Well, it's worth noting here that Dothan doing all of this offensive, or exhibiting all of this offensive prowess without Jalen Robinson tonight. Star point guard, who was 10th in the league in points per game, came in to tonight's matchup averaging 24.2 
points every time he steps on the floor. He has not been in the action tonight. As Dothan off of the missed shot will bring it back down. It's Octavius Thomas in the game for the first time this evening. Moved it on over. And now it's Nunnally. Jockeying for position down low. Nunnally takes it himself. Double team was coming over. The help side defense is too late as Nunnally spins to the left, falls to the right, and banks it home. 40-32. As Dotham looking comfortable now. Here comes Montgomery. Looking to stem the tide. It's Haynes with the Euro step. Can't get the first attempt to go. Second time by Williams. Won't go either. Third chance. Make it a fourth chance. And the fourth time's the charm. Williams doesn't quit on the play. And he's rewarded with a deuce. Six points is the advantage for Dothan. As we near the halfway point in the second period. Keep in mind the under five media timeout is looming. Deep three. Oh, my. Jamarcus Nunnally was blanketed with the coverage and somehow finds the nylon. 43-34 with an incredible shot by Jamarcus Nunnally. On the other end, stoppage in play. As wholesale changes coming in off of the whistle. Marquez Brooks will check back in for Montgomery. We'll see Deontay Brown once again as well as Dotham with momentum and continuing to ride here. Shot no good. They'll tip it right back out, and the offensive rebound is pulled down. It's Jordan Allen who will settle things for the Snipers. Over to Nunnally. Thought we might have a reach, and yes, we will have a foul on the backside. So they'll wave off the bucket. As reaching in was Brown with a wraparound attempt to knock the ball away. Ended up being the best thing that could happen for Montgomery because it saves a bucket. So Allen will reset here. It's over to Des Cole now. Posted up at the right elbow. Drives top of the key. He'll kick it over. Dothan looking for something here. Got to keep in mind that 24-second shot clock. Deep three on the way, and that one's too strong. Here comes Brown off of the recovery. He hit the deck, and Brown is still down. It's Dothan coming back down now, and it's taken right back by Montgomery. As all bodies have cleared on the other side, dribbling, driving inside. It's Jaron Washington Thomas. Get in his way if you dare, as Thomas counts the two and is just now getting back to his feet. He hit the hardwood hard. Takes a minute to collect his thoughts. He'll shake the cobwebs off, and everything appears to be okay with Thomas. We'll see if he gets a breather at the next available whistle. Next step ball will be your under five media timeout. As it's Thomas, thought we might get a foul call there. Not coming this time. Deep three by Neal. Jordan Neal. Fourth in the league in field goal percentage. He shoots at a 54% clip from the floor. And that's going, to, that's going to increase that number just a little bit. And on the other side, the answer, Marquez Brooks. You got to get a hand in front of him. It's automatic from that range. Still a nine-point advantage for Dothan, 46-37, as it's Nunnally. Had it taken away, the double team stepped up, and now we've got a foul to stop the flow. Officials will huddle up and discuss. Should still be Montgomery basketball. As Montgomery was on the run off of the turnover. Looking to win the foot race back down the floor with under four here to play. And that should be your under five media timeout. as we do a little housekeeping here from the scorer's table. 3.58 left to go in the half. Dotham found themselves in a dogfight early. As the lead has changed hands three times over the course of this one. Over the last three to four minutes of this quarter, Dothan has really poured it on. They've stretched that lead out to its largest of the day. Still hasn't been to double digits for either side, but Dothan knocking on the door. Again, with a nine-point advantage, 46-37. to 
And that is your media timeout as we've gotten everything straightened out, uh, straightened out officially at the scorers table. They will send the teams to their respective benches. There's your under five media timeout. 358 left to go until the half. And a word from our sponsors. Tour be lit, first of all, to even be on tour, you gotta be you gotta be one of the one of the super duper flies. People in Atlanta, they love Slutty Vegan, but like outside of Atlanta, it's crazy. The adrenaline rush that you get from it is just is amazing. We do celebrity events, casting calls, video shoots. When they say it's fresh and ready to go, like it's fresh and ready to go. We do it all ourselves. No machines, no nothing. We literally just got flat tops, grills, and fryers. Being on the road and being on tour specifically, it's like it's like you're a celebrity. Been to Boston. Tampa, Alabama a few times, North Carolina. The fact that we are able to travel together is like a whole different relationship. I like to call us like we're like Fast and Furious, right? Like it's, <laughs> you know, we're on the road. We're not in expensive cars or muscle cars, but we're in a big giant yellow truck. If somebody's got it and they're special and you see it and you want to work somewhere where you can just be yourself, this is the place. We make good tip money. You get to meet all types of people and it's fun. Montgomery with some work to do with just under four minutes left to go until both teams take the halftime break. Montgomery looking for some kind of momentum to ride into the locker room. Still with plenty of time here. This game is anything but over as it's Deontay Brown inbounding. He gets it into Williams and it goes right back. Brown running the point, top of the key. As the man-to-man -man defense picks up interior look. Posting up, it's Adrian Williams. That's a quintessential postman play. Body up, call for the ball, and do your thing. Octavius Thomas lets it go top of the key. No good on the three. The offensive board is there. Here's another three coming from the right corner. That one won't go either. That's Montgomery off of the board. Here they come, right to left. As we've got bodies on the floor, can't see the actioning, action happening up top at the rim. A foul was called, I do believe. And that will send Montgomery to the line as Bonnie's crashing to the floor on the dribble and drive from the left side of the paint. Jaron Washington Thomas. Due to shoot a pair. Too strong on the first one. Off the back of the iron. And he'll have another attempt. Down by six. Montgomery can use these points. That one's good. 50% from the line. On the night, Jaron Washington Thomas makes it a five point game. Neal. Carrying the point guard duties here. Drives to the right. He'll come back to the left. One pass over to number 14, Jordan Allen. Lying in wait on the baseline. He got the pass exploded down the baseline to the rack, and he's rewarded for it. One pass. Make it a quick two passes. Follow the bouncing ball as Marquez Brooks with the catch and release tray. 48-44 as the lead continues to shrink for Dothan. On the way back down. And that's an easy bucket inside as Dothan pushing the pace. 50-44. Smith working against the lone defender. Drives inside, stop and pop. Looks like that one did not go. Second chance opportunity. That one's no good either. Bouncing around and Dothan will pick it up. And we should have a tie-up coming here. Oh, no, they'll call the foul against Adrian Williams. And he is incensed with the call. Jumped in there to try and get hands on it. Looked like the tie-up call was going to be coming. But no, Williams called for the hand check foul. So Williams picks up a cheap one. 50-44. Thomas, Octavius Thomas inbounding for the snipers. And Dotham with no time to take their foot off the gas in this one. Deep three on the way. Off the right side, no good. And the rebound comes down to Montgomery. 
Inside, looked like he might have taken the third step, but no, count the bucket through the contact. It's an and-one opportunity here as it's Jalen Smith. From this angle, it looked like he almost took that third step. I thought there may be a travel call to nullify all of this, but no, the foul called before the foot drag. He was already elevating by the time the whistle was blown. 50 to 47. Deep three by Allen. That one's no good. And it comes back down to Montgomery with a chance to tie here. Deep three, an errant shot on that one. Maybe not the best choice. Luckily, Montgomery brings it back down, and you can count that one. Jaron Washington Thomas. How many times can we mention his name in one broadcast? Doing it all for Montgomery as the half-court trap slides over. Almost works like a charm. Instead, it's Octavius Thomas bailing out Dothan. Thomas working against Hill. Drives right side, and he is going to eat Jalen Smith's lunch. Quickness off of the dribble. Wins the race down the paint, and it's a wide-open lay-in. 52-50. to 50. As the dribble and drive lost. Cleaned up by Dothan, they'll take it away. And right back down they come. Montgomery with the quick hands on the steal. Oh, looking for the block on that one, but Jalen Smith is able to evade. Lays it in off of the window. The little white square is your friend with footsteps coming from behind. And another takeaway. It's Smith again. Almost gave it right back. Marquez Brooks trailing. Madness here in Dothan. Keep up if you can. As the foul is called underneath. And it is Marquez Brooks. Wow. As Smith is involved in all these defensive hijinks for Montgomery. Steals on back-to-back possessions. Almost gave it right back, and it was Marquez Brooks trailing. Saw what was about to happen, turned on the afterburners, and made sure that it did not. And he's rewarded with a trip to the line for two. No good on the first one, and he'll take advantage of the second one. Montgomery back up on top after being down by nine points. Only three minutes ago in game time. Now under a minute left to play here. 40, 41 seconds and ticking. Dribbling and driving inside with a right-handed floater. Nicely done there by Jordan Neal. He'll put Dothan back up on top for the time being. As we approach 30 seconds left in the half, it's Brooks dribbling. Top of the key, picked up and lost out of bounds. Brooks lost his footing. And lost the ball as a result. So how quickly does Dotham want to work here? Heavy backcourt pressure coming. Almost works. Ball, ball is on the floor. And we will get a stoppage here. As Dothan has got to take a timeout to preserve the possession. The full court press coming by Montgomery. I don't think Dothan was ready for it. Expected a lackadaisical defense to drop back and give them the last shot of the quarter of the half. And that was not the case with 24 seconds left to play before the halftime horn. Montgomery filling themselves back up on top by one. The rally has brought them back from nine points down in such a short period of time. Can't say enough about the three standouts for Montgomery. Between Jaron Washington Thomas, Jalen Smith, and Marquez Brooks. That is a trio that is a lot of fun to watch. You talk about quality entertainment. And Dothan on their heels. Not on the ropes just yet. Still a lot of time left to go in this one. But they've certainly been staggered. As Dothan down by one, inbounding just in front of their own bench and thrown away off of the inbounds pass. It's Smith. Who else with the takeaway? Drives inside, almost loses it. Battle for the ball goes to Dothan, and here they come with numbers. Euro step. No, it's lost out of bounds by Neal. Poked away at the last minute. And Neal was the last one to touch it. So Montgomery will likely have the last shot of the quarter. With 18 seconds left. In the first half, Smith 
brings it across, guarded closely. With time ticking down, he'll have to get a shot away. Kicks it over to the left corner. Drives over. It's a two. Good if it goes, and it will not. The shot by Isaiah Haynes off the mark. And that is how the first half will come to an end. 55-54. to 54. Montgomery has rallied to end the first half. When I came home from prison in 2001, I had a tough time finding a job. Have you ever been convicted of a felony? When you get to that part of the application, your heart starts beating fast, your hands become sweaty. It doesn't matter your education or work experience. That's going to be the determining factor. What up, man? What's up, man? What's up? What's up with you? Hey, man. How you get it, man? Very military. I'm on side. Inside. 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 I would fill out an application, and they tell me that they're not hiring, but they got now hiring signs on the window. Did that make you go back to doing some of the things that you were doing before? Yep. That's crazy. Yeah. Like, it's kind of like they forced you to. set up. Like, it's, it's like set up. It's systematically set up for you to have to go back. three years old when the U.S. Marshals came, beat down the door and got my dad. Maybe like five the second time. I just kept asking my mom, like, yo, where's my dad? Where is he at? He would tell my grandmother, I'm not trying to do that no more. I'm trying to get my life right. What up, boy? What's up with your boy? Good to see you. Good to see you, man. Being a barber changed my dad. Being able to have a community that he can turn to when he needed something, that helped him a lot. That was a hard moment for me last year. All those ups and downs that you've been through, to look at you now, I am so proud of you. I'm happy to call you my dad, man. What you just said right there is what it was all about. Everything that I've done was for that. Now I can retire, so <laughs> I can retire now. We've got a ball game here in Dothan, Alabama. The Dothan Snipers playing host to the Montgomery Knights and the Snipers at 9-3 and three and in second place in the Eastern Conference. Have everything to lose. Montgomery coming in with nothing to lose. The last place team looking for a big time upset tonight as we are just underway here in the second half. Fighting underneath for the ball, it was Adrian Fulmar trying to sway the official's decision there. And it will ultimately work. The Rock will stay with Dothan inbounding just to the left of the Montgomery bucket. They'll get it all the way up top and down by one. And led by as many as nine midway in the second period. Driving inside. Trey Jackson taking matters into his own hands. Won't be denied. And Dothan jumps back up on top by a single point. Take away on the other end. Here comes Dothan with numbers, momentarily anyway. And you can count that one. Jordan Neal was a little out of position. An awkward take up with the right hand on the left side of the basket, but still counts it. Speaking of counting it, oh, how about that view for Jaron Washington Thomas? Just to the right of straightaway downtown. It's good for three to tie it up. Counter three on the other end won't go, and it's Thomas pulling down the board. He'll kick it over left corner. Three-pointer on the way off the side of the backboard, but how about the positioning on the offensive end? The stick back is good. You can count the bucket, and through the contact, he'll head to the line for an extra one. Love the effort by Isaiah Haynes. Much more of a factor in the first period for Montgomery than in the second. But he's responsible for the potential and one here, and he will convert it. 
An ugly shot that caromed off the side of the backboard was retrieved by Haynes. And he stuck it back plus the foul. 61-58, and it's thrown away. Here comes Brooks all the way back down. He can't get the high percentage look to fall. And Dothan dodges a bullet on this trip down. Three-pointer was open momentarily. Fighting for the offensive board is Dothan. They'll come down with it. It's Fulmar losing the ball underneath, and it's Williams coming away with it for Montgomery. He'll give it up. It's Brown, Deontay Brown. Bodies on the floor. Oh, and the ball gets away. Prime opportunity there for Montgomery. But Brown having trouble finding his man along the baseline. Dothan with the ball. Working right to left in these Bumblebee jerseys with the yellow on top and black on the bottom. Works inside with the left hand. Floater close, but no cigar this time. Here comes Montgomery. Three-pointer on the way, Brown. Looked like he may have had his shot altered at the last second. Offensive rebound, that long three won't go either. So Dothan with a chance to tie or cut the lead to one. Pass up top, knocked out of bounds. It was dogged defense by Jaron Washington Thomas. And he's got a little lead. He's got a little bit of something to say to Jordan Neal. Competitors on both sides of the ball here. As Dothan controlling. The unnamed number three spins into the lane, lops up with the right hand. You can count that one. Ooh, potential travel call coming here. And yes, Jaron Washington Thomas slipped on the inbounds. We didn't see the call on camera, so it looks like they're going to give Montgomery a mulligan here. Checking to see if there's perspiration on the floor in a one-point ball game. They'll give the Knights a do-over. As Jaron Washington Thomas certainly slipped off of the inbounds play and hit the, hit the ground immediately on his back. Speaking of Thomas, falling away left of the lane, he can't get the shot to go, and we'll have a charge coming on the other end. Official having none of that, he'll send Dothan right back down the floor. With a chance to take the lead. It's Fulmar. All alone. They won't guard him closely. And the feed inside is a true one. Excellent vision. The eagle-eyed Adrian Fulmar finds his man on the baseline. And it's an easy lay-in. Dotham back up by a single point. Wrap around at the baseline. It's taken away. It's Thomas racing back from Montgomery. Can he save it? Well, he was almost able to. Got it over to his counterpart in number 16. And I believe he was the one who eventually stepped out of bounds with it. Actually, that was Williams. That was Adrian Williams trailing Thomas. It would have been a recovery by brigade if they were able to save that one. It was ultimately not to be. So Montgomery down by one. And 6.20 left to go here in the third period. On Triangle Media, presented by 1891. Left side, it's Thomas. Dribbling, he'll split the defense and lost the ball out of bounds. As we sort out whose ball it is, it will be Montgomery basketball to Williams. Over to Brown. Had an opening momentarily. Missed with the right hand. Second chance won't go either. Battling for the ball underneath. And who will win the race? Coming right at you. Watch out. And all you can do is smile on that one. Highly entertaining game so far. High energy, high speed. High drama, 62-61, under six to play. Here in the third period, live from Dothan, Alabama. Neal will get it in. Open three. It's good if it goes, obviously, off the back of the rim, no good. Dribbling inside. Oh, that's going to be Deontay Brown. 
pressing the issue. He saw daylight. He hit the hole hard like a running back, splitting the gap. Inside look now. It's Fulmar going up and getting his own rebound. Tries to stick it back. That one won't go. And a foul called underneath as Jaron Washington Thomas with his hands up. Asking what he did wrong. Enough contact to send Adrian Fulmar to the charity stripe. With a flick of the wrist. Not very many theatrics with that shooting motion. The big man is efficient. First free throw is good. Can he put Dothan back up on top? Rattles around and it won't go. Thomas skies for the board and Montgomery's got the ball. Pushing it across the timeline. It's Brooks now. Draws the defense over. Contact on the shot. That should be a stoppage in play. And yes, it will be. So that will send Marquez Brooks to the line for a couple. Draws the foul. As I believe that was Fulmar crashing over for Dothan. The last man standing between Brooks and the bucket. And Fulmar gets whistled for the personal. As Brooks won't get the first free throw to fall. So it turns out to be a productive foul for Fulmar. If you are going to pick up the personal, you at least want it to be useful. So instead of an easy two, Brooks has to settle for one here. 64-63. Montgomery back up on top. And back and forth we go. Dothan driving inside as we approach the halfway point of the third period. The unnamed player number three floats with the right hand off the front of the iron and Montgomery will pull down the board. Here comes Thomas with traffic, rises up and not able to get that one to fall. Karam's out of bounds, and that is your under five media timeout. 4.52 left to go in the third period. One point ball game. Montgomery 64, Dothan 63. Back right after this word from our sponsors. Whoa, personal foul. What the feezy? You can't use a beard trimmer below the 50 yard line. This is the waterproof lawnmower 4.0 by Manscaped. What's the difference? It's got new skin safe technology to help reduce cuts and nicks. It's powerful. Get gentle. Just like me. Dog, I appreciate you. Boop. Hey, watch out. Uh, I'm not ticklish. Get yours at manscaped.com. Catch your breath if you can. Both teams head back out to the hardwood. Montgomery at 2-8 and eight here in 2022. Dead last in the Eastern Conference in the Professional Basketball Association. And up by one over the 9-3 and three Dothan Snipers in second place in the same conference. Back down the floor looking for the foul and none was called on the contact from behind. As we try to sort out the mayhem here, bodies were on the floor. It was Gary Hollingsworth picking himself up off the deck. For Montgomery, stoppage in play, it is Knights basketball. Up by one with the ball. And looking to build on the slimmest of margins. Hill gets it over to Glover. And right back up top to Jalen Smith. Directing traffic. Calls for the screen. He'll get it. Moves it all the way over to Glover. Picked up by the physical defense, and the ball is taken away. Going back down the floor, out of frame. And out of play. So hold everything. The officials will check in with the official scorekeepers. As we weren't able to see what happened on the way back down the floor as the camera wasn't moving. Was there a foul appears to be the, uh, the discussion that's being had. So it is Montgomery basketball ultimately. They'll have to go the length of the floor 
to beat the shot clock, heaves it up. Shot did not go. But was there a foul called? It'll go against Montgomery. Had that been against Dothan, it would have been a major bailout as Montgomery was having to heave a half-court shot just to beat the expiring shot clock. Speaking of heaving, there's number three putting up a contested three too strong, and Montgomery comes back down off of the board. It's Hill, who's done an excellent job running the point tonight. Tried to go back up top, and Dothan snuffed it out. Here comes Neal. Tries to dunk it. Oh, that's as close as you can get to slamming it without a highlight real jam. Lays it in for an easy two. Dothan goes back up by one, and Montgomery can't hit the answer three. On the other side, three coming from beyond the arc. Well beyond the arc, you should say. Montgomery almost gives it up. Almost gave it up again. Back-to-back -back near turnovers, and it turns into points by Jalen Smith, who was just standing there waiting for the ball to come to him. Oh, goodness, rejected out of bounds as number three for Dothan dribbled crossways through the paint from right to left, falling away, and the shot was erased. Orlando ties. Having none of that. As ties and the Knights still up by one. Dothan inbounding. with a chance to take the lead once again in this back-and-forth ball game, Blow for blow. Pound for pound. Who's going to come out the victor? Another block on the inside. Ties. Oh, and he's whistled for the foul. Wanted that rejection. It looked clean from this angle, but the officials must have seen more contact than we did. As this Jordan Neal who sheepishly will head to the line and take his two free throws as Ties thought he had a block against the glass. Instead, Neal is good on the first one. That'll tie this game up yet again. The sixth tie of the game. And Neal not able to break it. Skying for the rebound was Ties. He was undercut. Hit the floor. And the ball goes back to Dothan. An extra opportunity here. From the corner, I assume that was a three-pointer, but it didn't go, so it didn't matter. Off the right side of the iron. And here comes Montgomery. That one's taken away. Dothan moving back down the floor. They've got numbers. Open three. No, he'll pass it up. Goes to Octavius Thomas, and Thomas lost it. Lost the handle on it and gave it right back to Montgomery. It's Brown. Deontay Brown gives it up to Hollingsworth, who will let the three fly. Didn't quite get his footing established. And we are tied 66 to 66 with less than two minutes left to go in the third. Ah, uh, excuse me, that was Thomas. Octavius Thomas kicks it into the right corner. And it's a simple catch and release for Dez Cole, breaking into the scoring column for the first time tonight. On the other side, Williams. Adrian Williams found a matchup he liked, tried to exploit it, and was fouled on the way to the rack. Actually, they'll give it to Orlando Ties instead. So Ties will shoot a couple back on the other end. with that essential big man free throw release. No bend of the knees at all. Just puts it up there and chucks it toward the rim. He's one of two that time. 69-67, Dothan up by a deuce. Trying to make it four. Oh, my goodness, pinned on the other end. Blocked at the rim. A chase down rejection. And Montgomery not going away. Left side, floater, too strong. Battle underneath. 
And the foul called late. With 1-11 left to go in the third. You think this one doesn't matter? Hard-fought battle between these two teams. Doesn't matter whatsoever where they are in the conference standings. Living to play for today. That's how it goes in the PBA. Dotham basketball, or rather, uh, excuse me, Montgomery basketball here. Knights holding. It's Hill working against a box and one type defense. Classic look defensively there from Dothan. Bodies on the floor, and that's going to be sniper basketball. The tie up is called possession arrow. Goes the way of the black and gold. Oh, no, they will, uh, they will make them jump it. One area where the PBA and the NBA coexist have not embraced the possession arrow rule. It's still a true jump ball between the two players involved in the tie-up. With a two-point advantage, Dothan with the rock. It's on the ground. Who's going to come up with it here? Montgomery takes it away. That should be Knights basketball. And yes, it will be. So a crucial takeaway by Montgomery with 42 seconds left to go in the third. Actually, make it 47 seconds. Knights have got the rock. Long three coming. No good. And a stoppage here with 35 ticks. Dothan will walk the length of the floor and shoot the bonus free throws. Remember, in the PBA, four team fouls in any given quarter immediately puts you in the double bonus. Dothan was looking for that fourth foul. I believe Montgomery on three at this point. Time ticking down. How hard does Dothan want to work here? Shot clock working against them. It's Neal. Had it taken away. Here comes Montgomery with numbers. It's a two-on-one as we can't see what's happening on the other side. A blocking foul called. And it was in the act of shooting. So the shot did not fall, but Jalen Smith will head to the line with a chance to tie this game. 24.4 seconds left in the third period. And it won't happen this time down. Smith misses to the left with the first free throw. How crucial has he been tonight? All over the floor. Good on the second. Makes it a one-point affair. 69-68. And Dotham with the ball. Shot clock is off. 20 seconds left in the period. Thomas inside with time ticking. Give and go. Goes right back to Des Cole. Rises up and drops it in. Three points is the lead for Dothan. Six seconds. Actually, a little more than that on the official game clock as the shot is up on the other end. 1.5 is where the clock will stop and a travel is called. That'll give the ball back to Dothan. And that will likely be the end of the third period. Seventy-one sixty-eight. ball is inbounded. Clock will expire, and we've got a good one. Headed into the fourth and final frame, it's 71-68 Dothan. Who will prevail? Ten minutes on the clock. We'll find out right after this. What happens when everything we know about something changes? I tell people all the time, this is the best American story you never heard. We're out hitting the pavement, talking to restaurants, talking to bars. I don't think of myself as a whiskey salesperson. I want you to know his name. Drink by drink, we're bringing this story to light. 
when we have to step back through the pages of history. It's so much more than whiskey. It's so much more than a brand. It's a movement. When we have to make amends and pay respect. We're honoring the greatest whiskey maker the world never knew. And it's beautiful. And give credit where credit is due. Uncle Nearest is the godfather of Tennessee whiskey, and the world needs to know it. What happens? We do it. <coughs> Uncle Nearest, it's more than whiskey. Ten minutes on the clock. Dothan with a three-point advantage. It's been a back-and-forth slugfest for 30 minutes. Who will be the leader on the scoreboard after 40? We've got a good one here on 1891. Glad you could be with us on Triangle Media. It's the PBA Eastern Conference here from Dothan, Alabama. The Snipers, the home team tonight at 9-3 and three here in 2022. Second place in the conference, and they find themselves in a dogfight with Montgomery. As it's the Knights controlling to open the quarter, Jaron Washington Thomas has got it. Dribbles around and throws it away. Clogged lane. Dothan comes away with a steal. Rejected on the way up. Thought there might have been contact. No foul was called. It's a clean block. Marquez Brooks for Montgomery. Ties the game. Open three from the right elbow. And we are knotted up 71-71. 9.36. On the clock, as you can see. Wow. Wow. That's the shift in momentum that Montgomery was looking for. Here's a deep three. You can call that one from the logo. If you're Jamarcus Nunnally, comes up empty. Fouled from behind on the way back down. It was Jordan Neal picking up the personal. Absolutely ran over the ball handler from Montgomery, who was still down on the floor. As we try to get a read on who the player is. Getting up now. And we'll head over to the sideline to get looked at further. That was Marquez Brooks. He will have to take some time out time off. Unclear if he'll be able to return. He was trucked from behind by Jordan Neal. You see him over there stepping gingerly, trying to collect himself. And that's what you get with a transition opportunity with both teams with plenty of speed. You stop in the middle of the floor and it's going to be hard for that train to get around you. Neal was just the engine leading the pack. As Montgomery's got the ball, Deontay Brown wraps around, drives left of the paint. And no, he will be whistled for the personal. A little too much mustard on the drive in, so the score will remain tied. Wipe the bucket off of the board, and it's Dothan basketball. Contested three, Trey Jackson, showing why he belongs in the professional ranks. That was a high level of difficulty on that three-pointer. And he made it look easy. 74-71, the answer three on the other side, no good, but the offensive rebound is pulled down. Stoppage in play, and that's going to be Dothan basketball. The officials may decide this one tonight. As a number of points have been taken off the board by the men in stripes. Driving central of the lane. Help side will slide over and the foul is called against Montgomery. So a nice job by Dothan there to see the matchup and exploit it. Trey Jackson once again taking over offensively here in the final frame. 8.37 left to go in the ballgame and it is time to perform everything you've got. 
Time to throw it on the floor. Push those chips to the center of the table, if you will. As Jackson knocks down the first free throw. We'll get some changes here as Jaron Washington Thomas will check out for Montgomery. In comes Gary Hollingsworth wearing number 12. You see him right there. Second free throw won't go by Jackson. So the lead will remain four for Dothan for the time being. Pass up the sideline, knocked out of bounds by Jackson, who's got quick hands to go along with those quick feet. Knocked out of bounds. That'll slow things down. Montgomery inbounding to the right corner. Hollingsworth lets it fly. Excuse me. Yeah, that is, that is Gary Hollingsworth. Specialty player spots up from the right corner. And splash. Nunnally now for Dothan. Splits the double team. Drives in. Floats it with the left hand. No good. Offensive rebound was pulled down and taken away by Orlando Ties. And Ties had his pocket picked. Unless they'll call the foul there. On Nunnally. And that will be the case. Jamarcus Nunnally called for the reach in. Thought he had the turnover. Deep three by the big man. Ties. Not sure who authorized that one. Well out of his range, and he airballed the three-pointer. Down by one, and a wasted opportunity for Montgomery. 75-74. Dothan dribbling. Cole tries to go inside and backed away. It was Hollingsworth who boxed out his man in the paint. Used that posterior to clear some space, and he's going to be called for the foul for doing so. So the ball will stay with Dothan, nursing a one-point advantage. Sniper's inbounding. Contested three off the front of the iron. Nice job by Isaiah Haynes to alter the shot. Was not able to get points on the other end. He was the first one down the floor and could not get the shot to fall. On the other side, the story is a different one for Dothan. It was who else? Trey Jackson. And Jackson, right after the score, gets the steal as well. Taking it himself. Another bucket for Trey Jackson. What is going on with number four? He is all over the floor. Montgomery looking to find themselves again. Three-pointer from the right side. It was Haynes. No good. The offensive board is there. Hollingsworth has got it. Down inside to Williams, and Williams had his pocket picked. It was Neal who came up with a strip and steal, and then he was fouled on the way back down the floor. Run over from behind, much like his counterpart Marquez Brooks was a few moments ago. So the ball lost out of bounds. The foul is called. It'll go against Montgomery. And Dothan, 79. Montgomery, 76. Time is of the essence. 7.15 left to go in the fourth. Who can stabilize? As it's Nunnally. Ooh. Slipped on something. There's something on the floor there. As Nunnally drove in, that could be dangerous. Slipped with the left foot. He hit the ground hard. or the floor, rather, appears to be okay. Certainly not an impact you'd like to take of your own free will. So the foul is called, and that will result in two for Jamarcus Nunnally, who's been a factor in fits and starts over the course of this game. Had a breakout performance in the first quarter. He's been relatively quiet since then. Not only good on the first one, he'll have a second one coming. Chance to increase the lead to five here for the Snipers. In the fourth quarter, it's been Trey Jackson carrying the majority of the workload for Dothan. Although not only goes two of two, that trip down. 81-76 and another strip here. It's Dothan Ball. No one in front of him. It's Jordan Neal with the easy right-handed lay-in. The lead is ballooning, 83-76 for the Snipers. Dothan takes it away again, another steal. Here they come, it's Jeremy Shannon this time. Elevates between the double team, can't get the shot to fall, but he'll go to the line to earn two the old-fashioned way. 
and it's death by a thousand cuts for Montgomery. As time continuing to tick off the clock, it stopped now at 6.43. But what was a one-point disadvantage for Montgomery coming into the fourth quarter has now ballooned to seven, and Dothan with a chance to make it nine here. Won't happen as Jeremy Shannon misses the first of two. He'll step out of the step out of the box for a moment, collect his thoughts, and steps right back up to the line. Changes coming in here for Montgomery. As the speedy Jalen Smith checks back in as a counterweight for Trey Jackson on the other side. One of two, that trip to the line for Shannon. Makes it 84-76. Dothan to Hill. Catch and release off of the three. Count it. That's why you bring him in. And that's a spark for Montgomery. Dothan. It's Fulmar. From beyond the arc, dribbles, puts the ball on the floor. He'll drive left side and fouled on the way up. Fulmar drew the help side defense over the late collapse. And the last defender to get there is the one whistled for the personal. So Fulmar will have two coming. Six fifteen left to go in the ball game, and that under five media timeout looming large, a chance to make some final adjustments without having to burn one of your critical timeouts. The great reset. I suppose you could call this a crowd shot during the stoppage in play. A couple of future PBA players, possibly NBA players, down there, horsing around on the sideline. Here to cheer on their Dothan snipers. As a technical must have been assessed, at some point during the fracas. So Trey Jackson will shoot the technical free throws. Good on the first one. And second one up and good as well. 86-79. And Dothan should keep the basketball as Adrian Fulmar will shoot a couple. Someone on the Montgomery side did not like the foul call that sent Fulmar to the line. Somebody got their money's worth, and that resulted in an additional two points for Dothan. So the snipers looking for help any way they can get it. First of two free throws won't go. You see Fulmar bend over in disbelief. Knows his team needs those additional points tonight. To make it an eight-point advantage, he will do that. 87-79, Dothan still up by two as Fulmar goes one of two that trip to the line. Jaron Washington Thomas holding for Montgomery fakes left now he will go left with the rock matched up well by Jeremy Shannon defensively and it's taken away oh the block on the other end but oh Dothan is still not able to clean it up third chance opportunity here fourth chance and finally the shot will fall but was the foul called before the ball was released or before the act of shooting Looks like they will wipe the bucket off of the board. So it is a true shooting foul. Trey Jackson with the pair. And the first one's good. Dothan beginning to feel this one trending their way. Points are coming now. To tie the largest lead of the game, there it is, 88-79. No team has led by double digits in this one. And Montgomery beginning to fill this one, slipping away. 
Need to get something happening offensively. Inside, it was Washington Thomas. Had the ball knocked out of his hands. It was Isaiah Haynes fouled before the ball ever found its way to Washington Thomas. So Haynes steps up to the line. First of two. Could not see if that one went through. It looks like it did. Substitutions checking in and out. Just a handful of time left to go in this game. 5.45 on the game clock. And trimming the lead to eight is Montgomery. They'll need a couple of defensive stops as Dothan driving right side. Almost had it taken away. Physical play there. Trey Jackson survives. Somehow gets around the defense. And a stoppage in play. Trey Jackson pleading his case. The officials having none of it. It's Montgomery basketball. Terrell Hill working with it. He and Jalen Smith, so small in stature, so saw, so similar in their abilities. His body is on the floor. That's Hayes who went down to the hardwood in a heap. So Haynes was fouled. And Haynes will earn another trip to the line. Actually, they're going to say it's a jump ball. No foul was called. Haynes was looking for the personal. And Dothan comes down with it. Take it away. Isaiah Haynes stuck his hands out and he was given a gift. Coming back down, Jalen Smith wins the foot race. And it's 89-83. Hold everything. This one is not over. The ball was placed right into the hands of the Montgomery defender. It's number three, the unnamed player for Dothan now. Wraps around, can't get the shot to go, but it's Adrian Fulmar on the second chance. He'll clean up the mess. Offensive stick back makes it 91-83. And we are in media timeout territory. On the other side, shot is rejected. Jordan Neal erased it with the right hand. Here comes Dothan with numbers. It's a four on two. Three-pointer coming. No good. Rattles around. Fulmar with the offensive rebound, and he had it taken away underneath as the foul is called. Montgomery does not like it, but that'll stop the clock. That'll stop play, and that will send us to our final under five media timeout of the evening. Lead is eight. Dothan, 91. Montgomery, 83. We've got a grandiose finish coming up after this break. You see, black people have always needed a place to gather since the beginning of time. To build, to reflect, to inspire, to connect. They say if you want to go fast, then go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. See, in continuing to fight for our lives to matter, we must have a place to gather, to write a chapter, enjoy the laughter, think and capture, sharpen our skills until they master. Not only a place to fraternize, but to strategize and analyze and advertise and sometimes just fantasize. See, 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 there's a certain brilliance that only comes from the collective. One for all and all for one is the objective. You get the message. See, we've always needed a place for like minds to collide and unlike minds to gain a better understanding of the other side. You know the vibe. You may want to switch lanes and you need a place to pick brains and network with big names. The level up is insane. The true meaning of for us, by us, with us, grown by us. Stories told by us, shown by us, 
loaned by us, so it's always owned by us. Somebody better write a song about us. We all we got. We all we got. So meet me down at the gathering spot. If ever there was a definition of crunch time for Montgomery, this would be it. Down by eight. It's not their largest deficit of the day, but it's awfully close. Dothan has led by nine points twice in this affair tonight. They won the last matchup between these two teams, 89 to 81. And looking to hang on this evening as the first free throw spins around and won't fall off of the right hand of Adrian Fulmar. Another opportunity. Dribbles it. Spins it with a flick of the wrist, and that one won't go either. Oh, of two of that trip down. Dothan unrewarded, and here comes Montgomery down by eight. It's turnaround jumper. It is true. You will never see a prettier move than that by Jaron Washington Thomas. 91-85. Back down on the other side, the unnamed player, number three for Dothan. Put him in the scoring column as well. It's back up to eight. Here's Thomas, Washington Thomas, that is. Deep three off the left side of the rim, and it won't go. Dothan on the rebound. It was Nunnally moving it up across the timeline, and it's taken away underneath. It's Hill off of the strip and steal. Here comes Hill. Can he take it coast to coast? Flips it up and count the bucket. Wow, 93-87 as Hill. It seems that whenever Montgomery seems to lose their way, Hill Excuse me, Jalen Smith, number 11, Jalen Smith, is there to clean up the mess and get his team headed back in the right direction. It's enough to force a timeout. 93 to 87, just over three and a half left to go in the ballgame. And as explosive as both of these squads are, 332 is still a lot of time. Again, Dothan, a team that knows how to score. They have a player in the top 10 in points per game. He hasn't played tonight. They have a player who's fourth in field goal percentage. That would be Jordan Neal wearing number two. They have a player who is eighth in three-pointers made with 25 in Trey Jackson, who has been the story of the fourth quarter for Dothan. But Montgomery has got some dogs on the other side. Personnel will be key. Who's on the floor at the right time matched up against the right player? That will decide who wins this game as it's Dothan basketball inbounding with three and a half left on the clock. Octavius Thomas works against the trap. Splits the defense. He gets it off to Fulmar. Fulmar tries to flip it up. It's knocked back over his head. And last touched by Dothan. It's Montgomery basketball. A two-possession game. 93-87 and a three-pointer here. Changes everything. A bucket of any kind will give Montgomery much-needed life. Falling away. Oh, that would have been a pretty shot. Jaron Washington Thomas has this habit of finding space where there is none. That one rolls around, and the shooter's roll is not in force tonight for Washington Thomas. Underneath. Dothan with an opportunity, had it taken away, coming back down. Look who's back, Marquez Brooks, and he can't get the shot to go. Had a high percentage look from the left side of the rim. Actually, he did get it to go, 93-89. Looked like he missed it off the top, but it fell through so quickly, it looked like a miss. There is nothing about that that could be mistaken. Deep three by number three, Dothan, back up, 96-89. Counter three-pointer on the other side off the front of the iron and rims out. You can feel the time ticking away from Montgomery. Number three had space to drive, kicks it open to a wide open man in the right corner. Shot no good, but the offensive rebound is there to reset the shot clock. It's Jordan Neal pulling down the board. He'll drive around. 
had room to drive. He goes into the left corner, number three, four, three. Just open enough, and it's a pretty shot to make it a 10-point advantage. The largest lead of the day for Dothan, and it comes with 146 left on the clock. Three-pointer on the other side, missed everything off the left side of the glass. Did not hit rim. Here's number three with an identical shot to before, and he was too open, missed everything. Too much juice on the shot. Ooh, heavy contact coming back down. It was Marquez Brooks, and he collected all chest of the defender in front of him with the pass attempt over into the left corner. Solid contact, and it's an easy charging call. As Montgomery coming unglued with 91 seconds left to play. It's Dothan basketball. Brings it across the timeline. Does Octavius Thomas, and it's taken away. Coming back down, it's Smith. Jalen Smith giving new life to Montgomery. Points off of the turnover. It's an eight-point ball game with a minute ten left. Look at Trey Jackson. What can you do with him? Three bodies in front of him. He rises up through the contact and makes it look easy. 101-91, lead us back to 10, and it'll be Montgomery ball. Foul was called driving down the sideline. That'll be the fourth team foul of the quarter against Dothan. Or no, they will. Uh, they actually will send it back to the sideline. As Montgomery was lining up at the charity stripe, ready to shoot two, and the official said not so fast. It's, Ter it's Terrell Hill here. Splits the defense. The double team is no match for him and the quick feet. Almost a Eurostep type play. It's a sideways Eurostep to get him to the baseline and an easy look for two. Inside a minute now, though, Dothan in babysitting mode. Can they play keep away long enough? Jordan Neal with the ball now. And if you're Montgomery, you've got a foul. Driving inside, that was not what you wanted if that shot would have fallen. Jordan Neal could have put this one away. Instead, he missed. It's still an eight-point game, making a five-point game. Three-pointer on the other side. Crucial for Montgomery. A crucial three-point shot to give them some semblance of hope as there's a timeout on the floor with just over 20 seconds to play. It is Dothan basketball. Make it 32 seconds on the clock, 32.1. In a 101-96 to basketball game. Inbounding is Dothan. Heavy backcourt pressure, as you would expect. Dothan still with the ball. Runs into the trap. They'll get it up. It's a two-on-two -two now as the defense will recover. Another trap coming by Montgomery, and time is running out. Timeout is called by Dothan to bail out their player. Time is of the essence. Montgomery did a good job trapping their man along the sideline. But precious seconds were ticking off as they were unable to come away with the steal. So Dotham will be inbounding in front of their own bench. Montgomery would need an immediate steal, an immediate score. And then they would have to get back and do it again. And I just don't think there's enough time left to pull off a miracle quite like that. What an effort tonight by the Montgomery Knights. When you talk about Jaron Washington Thomas, the effort by Marquez Brooks, Jalen Smith holding it all together. The glue man. The sticky tack of this Montgomery Knights squad. But Dothan appears to be just a bit too strong tonight, even playing without Jalen Robinson. They're a second-place team for a reason. They're a nine-win team for a reason. And looking to make it ten tonight. Up by five. Dothan inbounding with seconds on the clock. Long pass. That's an over and back. Yes, it is as it was Jordan Allen who was over the timeline when the ball was on the way to him tried to get back across half court but did not do it in time before he touched the ball so 18.9 seconds left 
A little more time than we thought there was. But Montgomery's got to get to work. It's Smith. Three in the left corner out of desperation. It's too strong. And the defensive rebound goes to Dothan. Knocked out of bounds. It will be Snipers basketball with 7.2 left. And the Snipers can almost dribble this one out. Foul has got to come quickly for Montgomery. It still hasn't come yet. Precious seconds are ticking off. Three, two, one. And that is how it comes to an end. Montgomery with a valiant effort. But your final score, Dothan 101. Montgomery 96. And Dothan escapes with the series sweep. This has been PBA Basketball on 1891 and Triangle Sports.